What I want to argue is that, and I'm going to be abstract for a minute, but this will get concrete very quickly, is that even if a broad-based cultural relativism doesn't work for people anymore, it doesn't give moral difference a role to play in our lives anymore that people are attracted to, I still think that the study of the various ways cultures define the good can help us find a role for cross-cultural differences in our moral life. Okay? Even if we don't want to be full-blown relativists and say we're just going to tolerate anything that makes sense to other people, I think that studying the ways people define the good still can help us develop our own moral understandings. And in, in working to substantiate that point, I'm going to suggest two different ways that a focus on different notions of the good is not the same thing as relativism. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to convince you that looking at the kind of differences I looked at in the first half between different versions of the good isn't quite the same thing as what relativists used to be up to. And that it's for this reason, I think, that focusing on differences in, cro in definitions of the good across cultures can help us think about how cultural differences can matter for our own lives. So first, I want to note a crucial way in which a focus on cultural understandings of the goods leads us to dwell on very different kinds of differences than the relativists dealt with. That's my first point. We could call that an empirical point. I'm going to say that the differences that we focus on, the differences that are out there in the world that we choose to focus on, are going to be different if we see ourselves as doing a comparative study of the good across cultures as opposed to doing a relativist study just of cultural difference in general. So that's the first point. We're going to look at different things. But then I also want to draw on a philosophical position known as value pluralism to suggest why a focus on the good can, can allow for a different use of data on moral difference than relativism did. So first I want to talk about the, the kinds of differences in the world we're going to attend to if we focus on different definitions of good. Then I'm going to make a philosophical argument and conclusion about why focusing on differences in the good is a different project than trying to become a tolerant relativist. Um, so first on to my point about the fact that the cross-cultural study of differences in the good is a little different than relativists. If you think about it, and probably some of you have done this yourself, when, when anthropologists or philosophers or people in their own everyday conversations want to make relativist arguments, what do they focus on in other cultures? Well, they tend to focus on things they find morally upsetting. They tend to focus on things they find pretty repugnant. When you're about to have a, you know somebody's going to make a relativist argument when they say to you something like, well, I bet you think arranged marriage is bad, or I bet you think ritual genital modification is bad, or I bet you think infanticide is bad, or there's a wonderful anthropological article a few years ago that actually started with the sentence, I bet you think child labor is bad. I knew I was in for a good article uh, <laughs> when she started with, but relativists always want to start you with something that you find morally repugnant, with something you basically find, as it were, disgusting. And then their technique is to tell you enough about the culture it comes from that maybe you could appreciate why it makes moral sense in its own local cultural terms. Okay. So to play this relativist game, you've got to be focusing all the time on practices that your audience finds disagreeable, that they just spontaneously dislike. What that means is that the full range of cultural differences never really comes into focus in relativist conversations. At best, you'll get the practice that you find upsetting or disturbing. You know, we'll take infanticide, for example. And then you'll get the cultural ideas that make sense of it. But the focus really is on the practice that, that you don't like. The focus is very rarely on what those societies define as the good that they're trying to reach. It is also true, and this is a slightly subtle point, but I'm only going to dwell on it for a minute, so don't worry if it, if it doesn't make a lot of sense. But when you, when you make a relativist argument, you tend to focus precisely on practices and not ideas. The trick is to hold up a practice like, well, these people murder a lot of children at birth. Murder, murder is already a judgmental term. They, they end the lives of a a lot of children at birth, that's infanticide. Or they practice arranged marriage, or, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're focused on their practices, not on the goals and ideas that motivate them to do what 
they do. Okay? You don't study why they're motivated to do these practices when you're just trying to make a relativist argument, and that's a huge loss because most people's practices only really make sense when they're embedded in versions of the good life, and I'm arguing that we should focus on those versions of the good life. So just take the practice of queuing in the UK, for example, right, which I know is a very important part of, of British culture. That's a practice. I could hold it up just as a practice, and in fact, in some places, people find that pretty exotic, right, that the British take it so seriously, right? But the point is to really understand why British people are so committed to the practice of queuing and why it's so important to do it right, you've got to know that it connects up with very important values about fairness, about people getting what they deserve, about playing by the rules, about punishing people who don't play by the rules and reporting people who do. So if you just focused on the practice and says, isn't this weird? British people queue up all the time. That, that looks immoral to us. You're missing out on the real story which is in the very important notions of fairness that that practice serves to put in to play. Relativism tends to get obsessed just with the practices themselves. Like if you just talked about queuing and not fairness. At its best, it will tell you about a practice that repels you and then very quickly relate it to other aspects of the culture it occurs in to try to make it seem less repellent, but it won't dwell on what people in the culture think is most important. And I, what I'm trying to argue is that we would do better in making c cultural differences in, um, relevant to our own moral lives if we didn't focus just on the practices, but we focused on the models of the good that they were trying to realize. If we focused on the fairness and not the queuing. Okay. For more debates, talks, and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.